Welcome to Mark D Maker. My name is Mark Taylor and today we're going to be doing detail work on Little Black Cap Chickadee. This is basswood and if you haven't seen how to get to this point yet look at my video Patterns 101 and cutting out a wood blank and uh, wood carving a bird and, and that'll get you to this stage right here. <clears throat> now what we're going to be doing as far as detailing is we're following a pattern and we're going to be finding the feather groups, putting in the feathers. This, this is where we get the wow factor. This is where your friends are going to go, oh, you did that? Come on over to the workbench, let's get started. So, one of the first things you need is a good pattern. This pattern shows all the details of the feathers. Top, bottom, sides. Curvature of the tail, even though I'm going to make mine a little more curved. I want to expose a little more tail feathers. Uh, let me show you why. Okay, this is a carving that I did a, quite a while ago. It's an American kestrel. And look at the tail feathers. Look at the detail in, in the tail feathers. When you have tail feathers that have such a beautiful pattern in them, um, you want to get as much bang for the buck out of them. Let's swing around here. And just something about the tail feathers being a little bit splayed like that is what I call my style. I like that. So anytime I have a chance to splay out the tail feathers a little bit, I usually do it. So with this part of the carving, I have the general shape and I'm going to start paying more attention to the finer details to make sure that the transitions are proper or correct, that my lines are in the right places. And you'll see I'm just kind of going over the, the whole bird, just doing little corrections on the outer shape of it. Now, here I'm doing a, a technique I was taught by an old wood carver. Your fingers are much more sensitive to shape and feel than, than your eyes are. Uh, and it just can help you uh, determine shape and, and whether it's correct or not. Now, here I'm working, trying to work out this angle. And I think I got that side pretty close. But I had some questions in my mind about it. I started to get a little frustrated, so I just moved on to a different area. So you see I'm moving around a little bit and came to this area. There's a much more simple uh, task to tackle. And so I'm going to work on this for a little bit. I'll come back to the other part when uh, I'm a little bit more confident about it. So to make this cut, I'm just going straight in, making a cut. I'm going to relieve the wood on the lower side of the bird here. And that's going to give it a little bit of a step. 
but then later I will come in and round that off so it's a very smooth, gradual roundness. There's no really uh, sharp edges on a, on a bird, so. Uh, one step at a time, you work towards getting everything smooth, graduated, rounded. All right, I'm going back to this angle again, and it just seems I can just, it, I can see it a little more plainly. It makes better sense to me now. I'll go in and take care of that. And as I move along, it even starts to become more clear to me. Uh, what wood needs to be removed and what doesn't. And here looking just for symmetry, so the uh, that angle is the same on both sides. So it looks like the tail is coming out from the bird's body straight and not crooked or at an angle. So if you notice how my thumb is bracing my carving hand, when I'm doing detail work, I always do this. This is, this is important. This is a really, really important lesson. At it, it first, it feels foreign. It doesn't feel natural. The more you do it, the easier it becomes. I don't even think about it anymore. This is how you gain control. This is how you don't cut yourself. All right, here I'm laying out the pattern of the feathers. You want to take your time and, and lay these feathers out. Now, if I was doing a competition bird, uh, I, would, I would have calipers. I would be measuring uh, and, and taking more time and care in doing this. But this is going to be a nice looking bird when it's done, uh, but not a, a competition bird, not a bird that I'm going to put in a, like the uh, ward competition. Here I'm drawing in the tail feathers. Now the thing to remember about the tail feathers is the most center feather is on the very top and these feathers stair step 
down to and outward towards the lowest feather. But the stair step that's there is very subtle. These feathers are thin, and so there's a very little difference from one feather to the next. But it needs to be visible, and if you run your finger across it, you should be able to feel the difference. But it's, it's subtle. There's a subtle difference here. Now on the underside of the tail, the most uh, outer feathers are on the top. And in, in this configuration, in these feathers, they're, they're very difficult to carve. So I'll be using a rotary tool to just slightly relieve those. On the top here, I'm going in with a knife straight in very shallow cut and then shave off the slightest bit. I mean, you can see through this wood, it's so thin that I'm cutting off here. Even though I shaved off just the slightest bit here, you can see the difference. It creates, it casts a shadow. And that shadow line is exactly what you're looking for. Now here I have a burner, and I will run this burner right down that line and see how I'm laying the burner flat. It's doing two things. It's, it's helping the separation it's not really making the cut deeper, but it's making it more distinct. You can see it easier. And I'm laying it flat and pushing in, so it's giving me a slight undercut, which is gonna help that shadow line without going really deep. Here I'm just smoothing out the feathers, getting rid of uh, any of the charred parts that are a little dark. It'll make it easier later in painting because uh, the lighter color gray that that tail is going to be, the darks will shine through. And you'll see what I mean when we get to that point. But I'm not taking a whole lot of wood off here. If it starts to dig in like it did just there, reverse, I reverse the direction. See the tiniest bit there, just getting rid of the burnt wood, the charcoalish type of wood, and uh, trying to get it as smooth as possible. I'll still come in with sandpaper in a little bit.
Here with the sandpaper, I'm just trying to create a nice flat plane for each feather. And before I finish it up, I will really lightly sand those edges down so I have more of a rounded feather. Now here I'm using some dividers just to find where the cape is. The cape is this part right back here. I'm using the beak to the back of the cape as a reference. I have a line there. And I'm going to connect the sides of the cape to the back of it. And then look at the side profile. Try to figure out where the wing is. Actually, I'm not pleased with where that line landed. And, and, and taking caliper measurements from a flat dimension to a three-dimensional uh, object is not the easiest thing. So you have to kind of close one eye and view beyond it. And I see my wing placement is actually right. So bring that cape all the way down to the wing and that's that's where it's supposed to be now normally what while I'm carving I will have multiple pictures, books opened to reference the bird that I'm carving. To simplify it and make it less confusing for now, I, I'm using just this one pattern. This is a, a really nice pattern. It has a lot of information on it. And so I'm just using that for now. Here I'm starting the the, uh, the feathers that protrude out of the back of the cape of the this bird I'm using the pattern as a reference I'm constantly re referring to it it's perfectly normal to to draw in a whole grouping of feathers and then erase them and redo them uh, it's just part of the Part of the process you, you put them in you look at it you, if you're happy with it that's great if not erase it start over i do that a lot And this side's looking pretty good. Feathers, uh, the primary feathers go straight back and slight curve to them. I'm pretty happy with that. So now it's time to get out the burner and the rotary tool. And please share, like, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.